Welcome back to the Table Rush Talk Show. I'm your host, Misha Zvagansoth, and today I'm thrilled to share an insightful conversation with a real trailblazer in the real estate industry, Alan Lomax. Alan has turned personal challenges into a remarkable career, focusing on empowering investors through passive real estate investments. In this episode, Alan breaks down the key benefits of commercial real estate and how you can start building your financial freedom without the hassles of management. Dive into this enriching journey with us and unlock new avenues to enhance your financial well-being. Alan, welcome to the Table Rush Talk Show. Misha, what a delight to be with you. It is definitely an honor, and thank you for that very brilliant uh, introduction. I hope I can just even halfway live up to that. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's just dive right into it. And anybody watch, anybody watching and or listening, you can go to uh, steedtalker.com again steedtalker.com and follow along and see some of the things that Alan is up to. But Alan, you specialize these days in real estate investing uh, to generate passive income. Yes, that is right. Yes. Um, with the whole intention of empowering uh, our investors to substantially uh, enhance their financial well-being and I'll let them define what financial well-being is because uh, it's different for everybody and we work on a values basis and uh, encourage people to invest not just from their brain but also from their heart. And tell me how... Let's see, where do we want to go with this? Do you have a specific strategy that you like to teach that's sort of a one size fit all? Or maybe give me some color about, about what you're teaching out there these days. Or does that question make sense or is that too vague? Uh no, that's 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 an excellent question. Well, what what we teach and uh and the opportunities that we provide are passive investments, and they're always in commercial real estate. We do not uh, delve into uh, the single family market. Uh, primarily, uh, we invest in multifamily properties. And the way it works, the way the structure works is that uh, we offer these opportunity to, uh, to investors so that they can take their funds and gain all of the benefits of commercial real estate without having to be the managers, without having to be the people who are out there acquiring the property, uh, without having to be the asset managers. Uh, in other words, uh, investment opportunities that derive fantastic returns on investment way beyond what uh, you could ever get uh, in the stock market or in the bonds or uh, in other kinds of traditional uh, ways of investing. And the, um, the benefits that come with it are, uh, are those benefits of ownership that only real estate provide. And there really are, are five uh, key uh, elements that uh, commercial real estate uh, offers, and that is uh, its income, depreciation, equity, appreciation, and leverage. And I don't know of any other investment that offers all five of those in one investment. And we can go into those uh, in a little more depth, if if you want to do that, or, or or I'll let you take the conversation where you want to go with that. I don't know if I even really answered your question specifically, but yes, you've done a great <laughs> start on it. Uh, so, if if I'm hearing you correctly, um, anybody who's our age by now and had some sort of success in their life has probably, or or, or is at least aware of real estate investing to generate passive income. Clearly, people know about 
uh, rental properties. Uh, so you t you spoke to a residential real estate. So four units or less. Most people think of a single family home. So an SFR, single family residence, or perhaps a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex. Once you get above a four fourplex, then we start talking commercial real estate, right? And that runs all kinds of things from the massive skyscrapers to strip malls to to a 17 unit uh what uh, apartment complex to uh coin operated laundries to all those sorts of things and and so it sounds to me like what you're saying is hey what you do or what you specialize in and what you teach people and make available to people is hey misha you, I don't need to go find the skyscraper. I don't need to go find the 25-unit apartment complex. You're going to find the opportunities, put them together, and offer people a slice of the ownership of it, but they're not going to have to manage. They're not going to have to do all the, the back-end bookkeeping. You're going to handle all that, and then we get all the benefits of commercial real estate, and let's just assume that most people don't know what those benefits are. And you spoke to five of them. And I say we dive deep into them if you're willing to, to do that with us today. Certainly be happy to do that. And, and not only do they not have all the management responsibilities when they're investing passively, but it just clear up one misconception. Uh, many people think that there's just no way that they can be involved in commercial real estate just because of the enormous cost of that. But ordinary, everyday people can because the investment is nowhere near what people think it is. And the reason it is affordable for everyday people is because it's many people investing together to purchase one entity. And like you said, that entity could be uh, anywhere from five units to, uh, to a thousand uh, unit complex and all kinds of things in between that. Uh, the, uh, the benefits that I was just talking about, the income depreciation, equity, and uh, leverage, are externally important to this concept of passive real estate investing because that's where the value comes to the investor. You have a question? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, the five benefits of ownership, I, I missed, one, missed one. So we've got income, depreciation, depreciation equity, equity, appreciation, oh, and, appreciation. And, and leverage. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, get back to it. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no problem. So income uh, is, of course, generated from rentals. And whether it is a strip mall that we're investing in or whether it's multifamily property, there are tenants that are paying rent. And that rent is generating income. And that income is distributed back to our investors on uh, generally a quarterly basis throughout the ownership of the properties that we invest in. And just like if you're, if you're an owner of a single family home, you understand that concept of uh, appreciation. I'm not necessarily gonna go in the order here, but appreciation is just a naturally occurring thing. And uh, we know that over the last hundred years that there has just been a natural uh, appreciation year over year of uh, an average of 4%. And that's without improvements on the property or doing anything else on the property. There is that natural course of appreciation. And generally, the whole periods are anywhere from three to five years. And so you can see a 4% increase in, uh, in an investment over uh, over a five-year period is actually just a 20% increase in the value of your money just from uh, that natural appreciation process. But it gets a whole lot better than that because depreciation, which is not something that is available to a single-family homeowner, 
but it is definitely available to commercial uh, property owners. And depreciation is an IRS uh, accounting way and means of actually returning uh, returning money to the property owner uh, based up on uh, a really a figmentation because because uh, <laughs> properties do not really depreciate, but we get a a an amount of appreciation that the IRS allocates to us every single year, and. Uh, generally speaking, on uh, on multifamily, it's it's about a twenty seven point five year appreciation schedule. So you divide the value of the asset by uh, uh, twenty seven point five, and you get that much amount returned to you each and every year, which and, is incredible. I yes, mean, that is incredible. Is. That's how people. I mean, uh, among the other of the five depreciation is always in the back of my head going, telling me, hey, Misha, you need to be in commercial real estate so you can be leveraging depreciation. Absolutely. That's how people build. One of the key ways that people are building these massive fortunes is due to that, that give back by the IRS, right? Exactly. And yes, the IRS loves uh, real estate investing. And so they've written the tax code to favor uh, real estate investors. And uh, I've I've been in higher education for uh, for most of my adult career, and uh, I certainly didn't develop my wealth through that. But you know, we get a fairly decent salary, but I have not paid uh, any income tax since I've been investing in real estate, and it's because of the depreciation that is not only writing down the income from the commercial real estate, but it's enough to write down uh, my income from my W-2 job as well. So that's, it's massive. It's a massive way to develop wealth. Yeah, if I understand it right, it's, it's literally, if, if you bought a, billion, a, a property for 2700000 divided by 27, that's 100000 a year. You could, I think those numbers are approximate. I could be off. But you could take that $100,000 and direct write-off against your income, from what I Absolutely. understand. Is that correct? Absolutely. That is correct, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's insanely powerful. Stuff. Yes. I mean, crazy. So anyway, uh, do we need to keep up going on <laughs> depreciation? That right there should just get people salivating. I mean, it makes me salivate. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you just aren't going to get that with any other kind of investment outside of real estate. I mean, stocks, bonds, mutual funds are not going to offer depreciation. Yeah. Um, so then uh, the equity is is the. Uh, is the ownership that we have in a property, and uh, and the we're actually only purchasing usually anywhere from twenty to thirty percent. That's that's the equity that we put into it, include our investors and we together put that in there, and then that seventy to eighty percent is funded through institutional funds from a bank, from Fannie Mae, from Freddie Mac, uh, insurance companies. So it is, it's a mortgage on the property, just like people have on their single family homes. Well, the, that is where that leverage aspect comes in, because we're purchasing equity of only 20 to 30% on this property, but we get 100% of the benefits from that property, 100% of the depreciation, 100% of the income, and uh, and 100% of the appreciation. And we only putting in 20 to 30% of that on the property. And that's what leverage is, is, is leveraging that fund there. That's amazing. And so you get 100% of the depreciation. Did I hear you say that as well? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the depreciation is is the depreciation on the total property, and we're only putting in twenty to thirty percent on that. Wow. 
Wow, wow. So this is awesome. Just quick, in the investments that you're dealing in, that you help people find, that you specialize in, what is a guy like me or what's the normal range of of expected investment from a from from someone like me for example is it 5000 to 2 million or or what what do what do people use you does it, that question make sense yeah it i generally say it's 50000 there are occasionally opportunities where we can drop that down to 25000 and it depends upon the way uh the uh the syndication, and we'll go into what a syndication is, is organized. And and this is controlled by the Securities uh, Exchange Commission. And there's there's two types of entities we could have, and uh, I'll just throw out the term there. Uh, their Regulation D 506B or 506C. And, uh, and if it's a 506C, we can uh, we can advertise that broadly, and but the stipulation on that is that you have to be an accredited investor mm. to participate at a five hundred six C, and so those are almost always going to be a minimum of fifty thousand dollars to get into those if we organize it that way. The five hundred six B. Uh, we cannot advertise it broadly. We cannot share that really with anyone that we don't have a pre-existing condition with. But the good part about that is is that we can drop that uh, that additional investment down to to twenty five thousand, and we can also uh, we can bring in uh, thirty. Um, non-accredited investors to participate in the 506B. So that's primarily the differences between those. So just uh, so the so a lot of people are going to go, well I don't have I don't even have twenty five thousand dollars, so this just isn't for me. It is rare for anyone in who has been in any kind of professional career for at least 10 years that they don't have at least $25,000. And they probably don't even know they have it. Uh, the uh, one, uh, they very likely have uh, life insurance that they could use uh, to fund that $25,000. Very likely, if they're professionals, they very likely have a retirement plan of some sort or the other. And if they have, uh, an IRA, uh, those can be self-directed, and we can go into that if if we've got time to do that. But they can take those IRAs, self-direct them. That's not borrowing from the IRA. That's taking those investment funds and investing them directly in the property through an established and and legally set up a self-directed account. And if, if it's they, actually pretty. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, if they have a 401k, if the 401k is with their current employer, they might possibly be able to self-direct that, but most employers don't allow it. So that generally isn't an option. But if it's a 401k from a previous employer, they can self-direct that just as easily as they can an IRA. So, so if it was rolled over, they could... They, they could, could yes, yeah. yeah, they could roll it over into um, into the self directed account, and then uh, another possibility for uh, certainly mid term career people is they probably own their own homes and they have equity in that, and that equity is probably just sitting there doing nothing for them. Uh, they can mm-hmm. get uh, a um, a uh, my mind just went blank. Home equity uh, loan. Home equity something loan, like yes. that, or do a cash out uh, refi yes, or something. Yes, yes, something in in those terms there, and uh, and they probably have well over twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. And in fact, that's the way I got started was with the home equity loan. So uh, they, um, it they they can pay off tremendously well, and it's better than just letting it sit there. Mm. 
I mean, it, it's appreciating, of course, but you can you can you can do better than just letting it sit there and appreciate. Amazing. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say again. Anybody can go to steedtalker.com, which is your website. There's a resources page. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say. Uh, looks like they can subscribe to your newsletter on the bottom right of the homepage. So if anybody's listening to this going, man, I need to know more. I want to get involved. I want to learn. Maybe I want to invest. They can go to steedtalker.com, opt in to your newsletter. Is there another way that you like to guide people to track you down? Um, well, there is, there is also several links there. They can link to a free uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, it just goes into the basics of who we are, what we've done in the past, a little bit of our track record, and goes into uh, a little bit of how the process works. I mean, and if, so oh, they can, can certainly do that, and, uh, and if they want another way to get in touch with us, uh, they can... Um, uh, they can... Uh, subscribe like you said that's not actually we don't actually have a newsletter what that will actually do is place them into our uh, investor circle and once they are members of our investor circle then we can set up a an orientation meeting and we will walk them through uh, everything that they need to know to prepare themselves for when uh, investment opportunities do come up. Um, and that's free of charge uh, as well. Amazing. Fantastic. And I see the links that they can click on. So there is the Explore the Possibilities free video. That's the the webinar you're talking about. Yes? Correct. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, amazing. So Alan, I want to, let's, let's circle back around to something that you said you said, hey, I at one point did not own commercial <laughs> rental properties and was not building significant wealth. And then some, what? at some point you got a home equity loan. So what happened? How, how'd you get into this? Give us the, the, the story. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a long story. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, I was... Um, uh, I was uh, a... I would say an accidental investor uh, for several years. I uh, I purchased uh, one of my first properties when I was uh, a pre professor at the University of Guam, and I purchased a property in uh, in Colorado and had a home built there. And I built it with the intention of having a place where I could come back to, but I didn't want to pay the mortgage. And so I built it with a mother-in-law apartment so that I could rent out the house and have a place to come back to when I had a chance to get back here to the States. Well, that worked out well. And, um, and I did that while I lived there. And once I moved back to the States, I moved to, to South Texas and uh, I took every opportunity I possibly could to get out of South Texas. And so, <laughs> so I kept the property there and I had a place to go back to, to ski and to hike and do whatever I wanted to in the mountains of Colorado there. And Can I ask you a ahead. question? Wow. Yeah. So as you're starting, it sounds like you're accidentally starting to build a real estate portfolio. Are you starting to take advantage of depreciation? And you're going, yes, oh, wait uh, a minute here. Yeah, I, yeah. I built something with an in-law and I'm depreciating it. And or mm -hmm. and so you're, with, yes. was that new information for you? Or did you have an idea when you started that you were going to get it depre depreciate and get that, that mm -hmm. <laughs> direct offset of your income? Or... or and you were pleasantly surprised or, or tell me about that. Does that question make sense? Yeah. I mean, I, I had been um, reading different books and from different gurus out there. So I had somewhat of a concept of what was going on there. And, and so I wasn't surprised about the depreciation. I was surprised at the magnitude of the depreciation. I was surprised mm -hmm. 
at what that did to my W-2 tax load. Um, because even one uh, single family uh, rental made a huge difference in my tax write-offs each and every year. Whereas everyone uh, else was dreading April 15th. I always looked forward for, forward to it with glee because I was getting huge uh, returns on mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I turned in my re uh, my tax returns. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and the, and uh, and I said initially that you don't get uh, depreciation on single family homes. You don't if it's your own home. Uh, but this was a rental property, and yes, you do get the depreciation if you are renting out uh, your property. So, uh, so, so, but, so, yeah. Just understand yeah. that. Yes, you can do that there. When um, did you decide to? When did you decide to go big on this or start syndicating? And syndicating is a big, <laughs> scary word. I think anybody goes, oh no, syndicating, or they think of, you know, syndicates or things like this, or the mob or something mob, like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, I think a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people think that these kind of really wonderful returns on investment that you can only get through real estate, they must, there must be something illegal about them. So it's not just the word syndication that is scary. I think the concept of real estate investing, when we're talking about the kind of returns that we get, are themselves kind of scary. But yes, yeah, syndication is not the mob. All syndication is, you can look the definition up in the dictionary, all it is is a group of people coming together to actually work together for a particular goal. <clears throat> and so that's what a syndication is. And uh, the, the structure of the organizations, we usually structure them around uh, uh, an LLC. That's the organizational structure that, that these businesses are organized around. Cool. And then let's, let's go to, so you start, you start reaping the benefits of, of owning a building and an investment property portfolio so you're getting you're getting appreciation you're getting equity and leverage income and this massive depreciation write offs so you're getting <laughs> direct tax savings in a significant way you're looking forward to to the tax to uh April 15th versus dreading it <laughs> When do you decide to really go for it big and start building syndicates and doing things like that, if I'm saying that right? Well, I wish I could say that I had, uh, had come to that realization uh, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but I didn't. And I, I, I'm not particularly unusual in that regard. Uh, you know, we're familiar with the single family properties. It's easy to move into them. we you know, probably purchased our own homes. And so it's easy to move into that. And it's easy really to kind of get stuck there. And many real estate investors, that's exactly what they do. They get stuck in a single family home and then they go, well, that's working pretty good. Let me move up to a duplex or a triplex or, or a fourplex. And you can get the same kind of bank financing on a fourplex that you can on a single family home. So you don't have to learn how to get commercial financing. You can just move up to four and keep on doing the same thing that you've been doing. And that's, you know, that's pretty much what I did. And that was working fine and wonderful. And, you know, I was reading different things from these various different gurus and they say, just leverage, leverage, leverage just as much as you want to. And that's great and fine until 2008 hits. And suddenly uh, the value of your property plummets. Uh, it's difficult to find tenants. And I found myself in deep trouble and I had lost everything that I had accumulated up to that point, which was, which was uh, about a, a nine year journey to that point. And, and suddenly I was, uh, I had lost everything. And uh, not only did I lose my property at the same time, there were a lot of cutbacks in higher education. So I lost my W-2 income and uh, the 
property values had plummeted. Even though I was doing well, they were generating uh, some uh, cash flow or some income. It certainly was not enough to support me. And so I, I lost a whole lot. And you would think I, I, I learned from that. Well, I did learn from that, but not quite enough. So it took me another, it took me really about uh, six years to climb out of that hole and to not get back exactly where I had been, but to have enough together that I did invest in some spec home development. And sure enough, uh, not knowing what I was doing, uh, I once again lost everything. I lost everything plus. Oopsie daisy. (laughs) I went into debt. And it was at that point, uh, and that was really 2016, and I'm going, you know, something has got to change here. I'm not getting any younger. And I can't re- keep, cannot keep repeating these kinds of mishaps. Um, you can only start over so many times in one lifetime. And so that was when I really started looking into multifamily and started looking into, um, into mentorships and started really working with people who have track records that are stellar and that know what they're doing. And uh, from that time, uh, it has has been uh, an amazing road uh, since that point in time. But it took, took, uh, you know, supposed to be intelligent here. (laughs) I I work in higher education, supposed to have some kind of intelligence. But it it took a long time for me (laughs) to learn. Really hey, <laughs> anybody listening or watching or that's going to click through and 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 learn from you? I mean, your pain. What a gift to them, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> right? I so, hope so. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you have a current favorite investment or story on a property that's really done well that you can talk about? Or yeah, over the last several years, the. Uh, we work with various different uh, syndicators, but one uh, syndicator that we have worked with, and they have been, they're, they're, uh, they have turned uh, 10 different properties over essentially the last seven years. And those properties range uh, in, they're all multifamily and they range in size from a 32 unit complex to about a 250 unit complex. And the, the rates of return on those, the annual rates of return for investors uh, have gone from a low of 25% to a high of 60% with really an average of about 30%. Um, And those are uh, the properties that were value add properties. That means that uh, they've gone in there and they've turned those properties around. Either they were just poorly managed uh, and uh, and changing the management was able to turn those properties around, get them rented up fully, bring rents up to, uh, to market rates, and uh, thus increase the value of those properties. Other ways and means, of course, of bringing uh, increasing value is to go in and do renovations on properties. And, uh, and we've done uh, both of those things. So those are, those are the, uh, the kinds of investments that we bring to our investors. And uh, they are well-vetted teams. They're stellar teams that have excellent, excellent track records. And, and we expect to have at a minimum a 25% return on investment with a uh, a, at least a 2.1 multiplier. So in other words, uh, we expect our investors to double their money plus over the time of that investment. And that's uh, usually a three to five year holding period, something three like five, that. Yeah, generally and then, speaking. Yeah, obviously no guarantees moving forward as well. I, we'd be remiss if we said that. There's obviously no guarantees, <laughs> but There's, it sounds yes. pretty... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> there are no guarantees, absolutely. And 
uh, but are there any guarantees in the stock market? Um, no. <laughs> and, uh, so Heck no. And uh, and so there's a risk to any investment. Uh, just to be sure that anyone, everyone understands that uh, there are risks, and certainly we uh, advise anyone who invests with us to understand the risks, and that's part of the orientation process that we go through with our enlightened, circle, uh, enlightened investor circle is we, uh, we, we show them exactly all of the documents that they're going to be exposed to. And one of those, did you say something or? No, no, continue no. on, okay. sorry. <laughs> so the, uh, so, and one of those documents is what is called a private placement agreement. And that private placement agreement goes through, and these are written up by attorneys, and they go through and they list all of the risks that could possibly go wrong uh, with any investment. And we go over those with our investors before uh, they put any money down so that they know what the risks are uh, before getting into an investment. Fantastic. So no one's going to dive in over their head without being fully educated on the process and understanding the risk reward, all those sorts of things. If that's what I'm hearing you say, I mean, it's, well, thorough. that's, that's, that's the intention. We intend to be very thorough and, and we, uh, and we discourage anyone to, uh, from investing with us who doesn't have the wherewithal to do that. Um, and, uh, and they are going to have to provide um, uh, their income history, uh, so we do have an idea as to whether or not they they have the capability to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm imagining that that you find investors who are super excited and and chomping at the bit to invest and are probably frustrated with the vetting process. <laughs> Right. Yeah. What do you mean? I have to learn about the risk and and give you these things. Can I just get after it? But yeah. it's it's obviously well worth um, well worth going through that that vetting process or 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 qualification process. I guess might be a better might be a better way to say it. Um, I would love to keep going on. I've got so many so many questions. I do want to be a bit cognizant of time. Um, any, any, so let's just talk about maybe some tips for the listener of some quick tips. Someone says, oh my gosh, I want to start taking advantage of some of these things. Or is that a, a good question? Do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. Get in touch with me and let's have a conversation. I mean, that's the best way to start. And, uh, and we'll provide uh, them with educational materials. We'll provide them with uh, guidance and direction. Uh, we will um, help them take a look at where they are uh, currently. And, uh, and we may find out that they aren't in a position to invest at this time, but we can help them develop a plan so that they can uh, get to that point in place where they can invest. So, uh, the place to start is just getting uh, in touch with us. And of course, uh, the um, there's multiple, multiple ways and means out there, all kinds of educational material outside of what we offer. But then also we didn't mention, but we also have a podcast. It's Real Estate Investing Abundance. Uh, we've been uh, broadcasting for three years now, and the podcasts are full of uh, investor insights uh, full of stories of investors who have messed up even worse than I have and have eventually come out on top. Uh, so that's a good place uh, to go uh, as well. Amazing. And I think what's interesting is people can oftentimes go, well, I could just invest in the stock market. And I think what happens there is you get trapped with your capital gains and typically the dividends that are coming from from that are relatively low interest bearing wise right so the dividends that you're getting from any stock market investment i i don't i'm not in i'm not a stock market professional or an accredited real estate 
guy. <laughs> so take what I say with a grain of salt. But I think I think that is what one of the powers in my understanding mm-hmm. of of commercial real estate investing is that you're really able to leverage this to depreciate. There's there's all these different facets mm-hmm. versus the price just going up. Yeah, and thank you for pointing that out. Yes, that is a problem with investing in stocks or the capital gains. And uh, there are real estate investors who who started out in the stock market and uh, and as their portfolios grew and grew, the, uh, their taxes grew and grew and grew right along with that. And uh, and when they discovered real estate, uh, many of them have completely divested from their uh, from their stocks because because of capital gains and the taxes that come come with that, where they they can avoid all of that in in real estate investing. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I think that that is a hidden thing, and um, I as well. You know, you've got the Bitcoin mania, and on any given month or year these days, that is in full swing or completely collapsing. So that's hyper volatile. Uh, I think you know there was the ETF, not ETF. What were those things called? Where you could NFTs. There was the NFT craze. Mm -hmm. There's all these sorts of 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 investments that I would like into straight up gambling. So if you like gambling, great, dive into those. But I think a more prudent. Again, I am not speaking as a professional. I'm just speaking as a as a as a as a as a, as a normal Joe with a podcast. That there's lots of opportunities in in commercial real estate. Um. So everybody listening, watching, go to steedtalker.com. That's s t e e d talker.com. Steed Talker.com, ton of information about Alan, what he's up to. You can watch his video uh, that'll begin the education process. You can opt in and subscribe to, uh, what did you call it? Your investor alert, your investor circle. Investor circle, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, amazing. And then uh, check out the podcast as well, Real Estate Investing Abundance Podcast. It's awesome. I actually had a chance to speak on there. Thank you for bringing me on to talk about the power of talking about what you do to 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 spread the word on by guest speaking on podcasts so that was a ton of fun um you were a wonderful guest delightful guest to have so (laughs) thank you very much alan and then i always like to end with is there anything you'd be remiss that you didn't say and or or speak to or or whatever we hang up inevitably we go oh i wish that is said (laughs) Right? Is there anything that yeah. comes to your well, mind quick? Yeah, yeah I would like uh, just it, when you're investing in stocks and bonds, uh, mutual funds, so on and so forth, uh, you have no direct connection with the entity that you're investing with. When you're investing with us, you're investing in a property and you know what that property is, you know where it is, and you have a direct connection with it. And that brings uh, not only financial rewards, but it brings personal rewards because you're involved in a process of bringing a derelict property back to life. You're, you're in the process of providing aesthetic, uh, pleasant, pleasing workforce housing. Uh, you are in the process of, of just an example of taking one of the properties, a derelict property, uh, to fruition. Uh, there was this property in Mur- uh, Murphy's uh, Borough, Tennessee, that was a home to to drug addicts. I mean, that's that was the tenant base. And once we took over this property, within six months, we had children playing in the playgrounds without supervision. And as a passive investor with us, you get to participate in those kinds of things. So it's not just financial reward, there's personal reward uh, in being involved in these, where you're not going to get that in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. I love that. What an amazing side benefit. And just the yeah, it's beautiful. I love the way you said that. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Alan, this has been amazing. 
I'm going to hit stop and we will say goodbye offline. Thank you so much, uh, Misha. What a pleasure it's been being with you. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Table Rush Talk Show. For resources to help you sell your stuff, go to B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. That's B-Love dot media forward slash resources. And be sure to subscribe, comment, five star and share. Thank you again for listening.